So this is our worm composting unit, our luxury worm hotel. Uh, what we tried to, what we're trying to create here. Um, so basically, it's just a, a bin or a box that has been lined with plastic. Um, on the on the bottom, there are planks of wood that are lying on an on an angle, so that any of the the moisture, whether it be uh, from the from any of the fruits and vegetables that we put in here that are draining to the bottom or worm urine or any sort of liquid can seep through, get caught on the plastic, is then caught in this little gutter here and then we store it as a, as a fertilizer. So we'll end up using this liquid fertilizer, mixing it with some water and then spraying it directly onto our plants. Um, and it is, is very nutritious and um, and we've seen a lot of results actually in the garden with it. So we dump all of our leftover scraps, kitchen scraps in here, only fruits and vegetables. Um, and then, you know, after every day or every other day, I'll either sprinkle sawdust um, that we get from one of the local carpenters or leaves, dried leaves from, from the forest to add a little bit more carbon so it doesn't get too wet. Um, it's basically a similar idea to the composting toilets in that you want it to maintain the environment. You don't want it too wet. And it's one reason why we have the roof here to prevent, um, you know, too much too much rain. Uh, but we want aerobic bacteria uh, breaking down the majority of of this on their own, in addition to the red worms that we have. Um, so both of those agents together break this compost down uh, very quickly, um, and and as well, adding the, the sawdust and the, the leaves sort of prevent um, flies and, and, and the stench that will happen if it was too wet. Um, and, you know, we'll see the pond later, but worms and, and different, if the flies manage to get in here, which they always do, they will lay eggs and they'll hatch into little um, larvas. And so those we can actually collect on a daily basis, those and the red worms, and feed them to our fish in our pond. So it's sort of like a nice little closed, closed, fully contained system. So out of here, you only use the water or is there? We will use the compost eventually. Um, and it's why I designed this um, so that we could eventually get the compost out. So these, this comes out and then each of these planks comes out, lifts out of these slats. And then there's a little door, trap door in, um, in the screen. So when this is ready to, to harvest, to collect all this compost, we can take these slats out like this. Take this one out, and then there's a little hatch down here where we can lift this up. And as you can see, there's some ants. Um, and then collect all of the compost. So when this, once we have this about 75% filled, we'll shut this down and then start a new one in this bin here. Um, which is currently being used as a, as a chicken coop for our three resident chickens. But these, um, the chickens will be moved eventually here, which will be the new chicken coop, and this will be available for the worm composting. So and, how long has this been here? Um, this is about three months, maybe, of compost, a little more. So it's basically only food scraps? Only food scraps. Nothing from the garden? Or... Nope. Occasionally, maybe a little bit, we'll throw in there, but the majority of all of the all of the extra plants, the weeds and stuff that we take from the garden, goes into this pile here, which is less regulated. We just have so much, um, so this is more of a, a a rustic sort of like this the simplest compost you can have, which is basically just a heap um, of all of this organic material that's breaking down um, on its own. So we have a plastic sheet that we cover it every once in a while to prevent too much rain, but it is very wet as it is. Um, but highly productive as well. So if you were to dig in there right now, you would find a lot of red worms because we put red worms in this as well um, and very, very rich uh, organic, organic soil. So we use both in our gardens. Do you ever turn that? We do, yep. We should get a thermometer so we can check the temperature. Here we got a little worm. That's the slimiest, fastest worm ever. Oh yeah. Which it's great when you when you find worms in your compost or in your garden, they're sort of indicator species of a healthy environment, um, and they're sort of like the natural tillers 
um, of the earth. So worms are always a good sign. Um, and we turn this, yeah, every, I would say every month or two months. Um, and we really will put the, put the plastic on later today to prevent some of this, some of this growth. We also use this as a, uh, a sort of a seed, um, like a perfect environment for fruit tree seeds. So um, mangoes and avocados and mame and other, other seeds like pits that are fairly large and hard to germinate sort of on their own. Um, putting them in here, um, we just sort of let nature do its work and it's, it's the perfect environment for breaking down the outer husk if it's like a mame or something else. So we'll line the sides of these with the fruit tree pits and fruit tree seeds um, and we've had, we've had great success. We've probably harvested like 30 uh, avocados and 10 mame and, and you know, um, a lot of mango as well, so serving various functions as well. Inject during karma yoga during one of the courses, so we're going to try to incorporate the bamboo in any way we can as much as possible, um, but this eventually, this entire area will be fenced in so the, the chickens can run loose, pick through the compost pile, um, which will be great. They'll find all sorts of insects and goodies in there, and at the same time um, adding their own, their own compost. Um, uh, to the mix, so which will prevent the, the street dogs and the other animals from coming in and harassing our chickens.